Hey team, we're back at it again in Transaction Desk, and today's session is going to be on sending over forms for the consumer to fill out where you're allowing editing within the form. This is a really cool feature and awesome for the property condition disclosures that you might need to send over to the seller for them to select the appropriate boxes where applicable. So let's go ahead and dive in and get started. First, we're gonna head into our transactions. You can do that right on your dashboard. You can click on your little house off to the side. I'm just gonna jump right here. We're gonna go ahead and add in the form. And if your dashboard looks a little different than mine, check out navigating the dashboard and I'll show you how to move the tools around. But we're gonna go ahead and enter in the property condition disclosure, which in the state of Tennessee, we're using the 201. And we're gonna add this in. Now this document automatically auto flows right into the forms toolbar here. Let's go into the forms. You can select it on the bottom or in your right toolbar. And if you don't see this right toolbar, you might have to expand it using the upper right hand corner arrow. All right, so in here we've got our 201. Um, it's right here. To send this over to the consumer as a blank 201, we're gonna select the radial button. Now, before you move forward, you want to make sure that your contact is included in the transaction. You can enter them here on the right toolbar in your contacts before you get to the screen. My transaction was already set up, so my contact's already there. So we're gonna go ahead and proceed with the radial button, jumping up to the basket and selecting the send via email. It looks like a little envelope. Once we're here, we're gonna type in who this is gonna to go to. And then we're going to select the recipient here. Now, Fred is already in my contacts, so I'm gonna select Fred. And maybe Wilma wants to also get a copy, so I can select Wilma here. Now, if you do not see your transaction contacts, you may have to select from the down arrow. And you can also pull from your Google contacts if you have that set up in your settings. I'm going to change this subject over to property disclosure. And then here in the message, this will come over to the consumer in their email and you can write whatever you'd like. I like to include a message that says something like, please see the property disclosure for you to fill out that we discussed during our listing consultation or strategy session, however you'd like to word it. Let them know that there is a timer that's gonna be set on this. And so time is of the essence and we like this to be promptly completed. So that way we can send it back with the remaining documents for digital signature. Now you can send this as a link or an attachment. I prefer to send it as a link so that way all they have to do is click. If you wanted to send this over for a preview ahead of time, you could do a watermark. I leave this unchecked. And then here is the allow editing of forms button. You're gonna wanna go ahead and check that box. Now you can set this up in your settings ahead of time to default to this and I'll show you how to do that. But if it's unchecked, make sure you have that box checked. If not, it'll just send over as a PDF document. Now you're gonna to wanna to set your expiration date. I like to give them 24 hours to get this completed. If they need more time, obviously select a date that is most appropriate and then click send. Once it's sent, you'll get a green flag on the bottom right corner that says this has been sent off to the consumer. They will then receive an email over in their inbox and it will look something like this. It says, hey, you've got this property disclosure. Here's the message and here's the link. Once they select the link, it will then open up a version of Transaction Desk for the consumer. Now notice the toolbar on the top is a little different than what you see as an agent. They only have the option to save and print exit or jump between the pages. They can also zoom in, zoom out, and then save and exit. So they'll be able to go through and select all of the appropriate boxes and check this off just like you can on your forms. Now notice on the very bottom, it's not gonna allow them to sign. There's no signature. So you don't want, you want to make sure that you explain to the consumer ahead of time that they're only filling out the document. Once complete, all they need to do is click save and exit. So I'm gonna go ahead and enter in some information so you can see what this looks like on the agent side. Here's some information, maybe they checked off all of these. 
down a septic tank. They have this garbage disposal. It's a dino garbage disposal. They just put it in just a few years ago. They want to make sure that that's also listed, that it's going to stay. And there might be some other things like maybe they'll have a stainless refrigerator. Okay, they may add in details as far as what kind of brand it is, etc. Um, down here, they're going to go ahead and check off all of the boxes that might apply, so on and so forth. And then here's the HOA information. So this might be... All right. Etc. Okay, so they'll fill this out to its entirety all the way through. I'm just going to enter in some more data here and click Save. Now, once it's done, it's going to say thanks, and they can go ahead and jump on out of there. Now, on the agent side, when you come back into your transaction desk, you're going to be back on your dashboard, and it will look something like this. To get to the form to make sure that the consumer has signed it, all you have to do is open up that form again. And from here, you're going to be able to see their notes and everything that they checked off on this form and anything that they filled out. Okay, so now from here, what you can do is you can jump this right to AuthentiSign for them to sign. So if you've already sent over the entire listing packet ahead of time, it's okay. You can send this one individually. Otherwise, you'll just merge this in with your AuthentiSign signings and it will be good and ready to go. When it's all complete, it will come down here into your AuthentiSigns and you'll have a full signing packet. If you need help with any other form to allow editing, let me know in the comments. But to get to that feature where it defaulted, you're going to want to come up to your settings. It's at this little gray circle up here next to the shopping cart. When selected, you're going to highlight over the settings button and click on program settings. Jump on down to the button that says email settings. From here, you can default to a link or the attachment. Like I said, I like to use the link. And then you want to make sure that this checkbox is checked to automatically default to allow for the forms to be filled out where applicable. And the where applicable in our case is that property disclosure. When complete, click update and it will remember that checkbox in the future. All right, friends, that's it for now. That's all I have. Thanks for watching today and I'll see you at the next one.